Crime Story. Details of the Disappearance of Female Mystery Claudia Lawrence On the evening of March 18, 2009, a Wednesday, Susie Cooper found herself at the Nags Head Pub in York, England, eagerly awaiting the arrival of her closest friend, Claudia Lawrence. They had made plans to gather for a casual glass of ale and some much-needed socializing, a tradition they upheld at least once a week. The bond between these two women was so profound that they felt more like sisters than mere friends. As the minutes turned into an hour, Susie began to grow concerned. Claudia had never been one to keep someone waiting, so she assumed her friend was running a bit late and sent her a message. But there was no response. Growing more apprehensive, Susie decided to give Claudia a call, but the phone call was directed straight to voicemail. This behavior was unusual for Claudia who was known for her responsibility and attentiveness. The night came and went without Claudia's arrival, and this pattern continued in the subsequent nights that followed. A little bit of background. Claudia held the position of a chef at the dining hall within York University, a place she held in deep affection. She had moved closer to her workplace on Hewerth Road when she secured the job back in 2006, purchasing a cozy terrace house just 4.5 kilometers away. Living alone, aside from her work, she relished her solitary walks and cherished her personal pursuits. Frequent gatherings at the Nags Head Pub with friends were common for Claudia, but her most cherished moments were spent in the company of her beloved horse. Her passion for horseback riding had ignited during her early childhood, shaping her into the enthusiast she was today. Claudia's early years were filled with joy and carefree days spent with her parents and older sister in Malton. She had her own pony, which she cared for and rode with great enthusiasm. Her family life was marked by happiness. Claudia was the younger of the two sisters. Ollie was her three-year senior. Their parents, Peter, a successful attorney, and Joanna, a city councilman and former mayor, provided them with a splendid upbringing, a quality education, and a truly wonderful life. Both sisters attended the same private school, where they were instilled with values of kindness and love by their parents. Their shared passion for animals extended to volunteering at the local shelter. Claudia's warm affection for all living creatures remained steadfast into adulthood, and for a time, she aspired to become a veterinarian. Eventually, however, she chose to enroll in a local college to pursue her dream of becoming a chef. Even when Peter and Joanna went through a divorce, their adult daughter's bond remained unshaken. The family continued to maintain their closeness and actively engaged in one another's lives. Disappearance On March 18, Claudia's absence at the nag's head and the subsequent silence throughout the next day left Susie deeply concerned. This deviation from Claudia's usual behavior raised red flags. They were accustomed to almost daily communication and the unreturned messages and Claudia's unreachable phone left Susie feeling uneasy. Claudia was rarely without her phone, constantly texting. With the pressing need to check on her friend, Susie couldn't obtain time off from work, so she turned to Claudia's father, Peter, and shared her inability to reach Claudia. Recognizing the seriousness of the situation, Peter agreed to visit his daughter's home, suspecting something might have transpired there, possibly a break-in or worse. Strangely, Peter's concerns momentarily slipped from his mind, and he only recollected them on March 20th, prompted by a call from George Foreman, another friend struggling to contact Claudia. This delay may have had a significant impact on the subsequent search for Claudia, as her father and friends might have held out hope that she would reappear unharmed. Nevertheless, on the afternoon of March 20th, Peter took the decisive step of contacting the dining hall at York University, Claudia's workplace. There, he received the disheartening news that Claudia had been scheduled to work on both Thursday and Friday, starting at 6 a.m., but had failed to show up on either of those days. Her employer had also made numerous attempts to reach her, all in vain. The dreaded realization had now set in for Peter. Several hours later, Peter and George arrived at Claudia's residence, finding all the doors securely locked with no apparent signs of forced entry. Using his key, Peter entered the house to a seemingly ordinary scene. Claudia's personal belongings remained neatly arranged, her clothing hanging in the closets, 
and the home well kept and tidy. The only anomaly was the accumulation of dirty dishes in the sink, suggesting she had enjoyed breakfast and then left the house on the morning of March 19th. Her bed remained neatly made, and her usual jewelry remained undisturbed. Her passport, cash, and bank cards were in their designated spots. As later confirmed by the police, the only items missing from the premises were her Samsung D900 phone, a hair straightener, her white chef's attire, and her backpack. Notably, Claudia rarely ventured outside without her trusty backpack, within which she carried her chef's uniform. It appeared as though she had prepared for work on the morning of March 19th, but something had prevented her from reaching her workplace. On that very same day, Peter made the fateful call to the police, formally reporting Claudia's inexplicable disappearance. Searching Initially, the situation appeared inconsequential, but the police wasted no time in launching an investigation. Typically, searches for missing persons were initiated after a five-day waiting period, especially when the individual was an adult of 35 years with no apparent signs of assault or abduction. It wasn't uncommon for people to take a brief break and disappear temporarily, only to re-emerge. However, the police held a different perspective. Their inquiries quickly revealed that Claudia's last known appearance was on Wednesday, March 18th, at 2.10 p.m., when she left her workplace. On that same evening, she had engaged in phone conversations with Peter and Joan. The final text message sent from her phone occurred at 8.23 p.m., with the last incoming message received at 9.12 p.m. Recognizing the urgency of the situation, the police acted swiftly. Approximately 200 officers descended upon the neighborhood, scouring her residence and the route she typically took to work. They diligently canvassed the area, seeking out potential witnesses who might recall any unusual occurrences or sightings of Claudia on that particular day. Reviewing surveillance footage, they uncovered multiple instances of Claudia's presence on street cameras that Wednesday. These recordings revealed her journey homeward, which under normal circumstances would consume approximately 45 minutes. According to the surveillance footage, Claudia made a stop at a mailbox, depositing a letter within it. Shortly thereafter, around 2.30 p.m., a co-worker spotted her and offered her a ride, which Claudia politely declined. At 3 p.m., she appeared on CCTV outside a store on Melrose Gate, a location in close proximity to her residence. Later, a neighbor reported seeing Claudia near her home on March 18th, albeit walking in the opposite direction. Evidently, Claudia had returned home quickly, for at around 4 p.m., she placed a call to her mother, during which there was no background noise of bustling streets. Subsequently, she engaged in a conversation with her father, Peter, for approximately 10 minutes. These exchanges were unremarkable, devoid of any strange or disconcerting elements. For instance, while speaking to her mother, they shared the experience of watching the same TV show and discussing the characters within it. Following these conversations, Claudia informed Joan that she intended to retire for the night, as she had an early morning shift, commencing at around 4 a.m. They also chatted about upcoming Mother's Day plans, exchanged warm wishes, and said their good nights. This marked the final conversation between Joan and her daughter. Claudia transmitted her last text message from her phone at 2023. However, she did not respond to a message from her friend, Susie, which had been received at 9.16 p.m. According to the phone operator's records, Claudia's phone ceased to be available just past midnight, around 10. It remains uncertain whether she turned it off herself, if its battery had depleted, or if someone else powered it down. The police postulated that on the following morning, March 19th, Claudia had risen as planned, leaving her residence equipped with her backpack and phone. Their prevailing theory suggested that she likely vanished during her customary route to the university cafeteria. A breakthrough came when a witness emerged. A cyclist came forward, asserting to have observed a woman closely resembling Claudia in conversation with a man during the early hours of March 19th. This man was identified by police as a left-handed smoker. The cyclist reported this sighting near the Melrose Gate Power Substation at 5.35 a.m., which aligned with Claudia's habitual passage, as it was a mere 10-minute walk from her home. 
Intriguingly, a surveillance camera graced the front of the substation, situated somewhat along her route, yet it failed to capture any trace of Claudia. Furthermore, another witness recounted an incident involving a man and a woman bearing a striking resemblance to Claudia engaged in a heated exchange alongside a parked vehicle on University Way at approximately 6 a.m., coinciding with the time Claudia was scheduled to commence her work. Despite the thoroughfare's bustling nature, no one else could substantiate these testimonies. Nonetheless, the police diligently searched the vicinity and probed surveillance footage, yielding no signs of suspicious activity. The fate of Claudia remained shrouded in uncertainty. The crime scene was conspicuously absent, and no one could definitively confirm her last presence within her residence, whether it was on Wednesday evening or on the Thursday morning she departed for work. It's worth noting that despite the extensive activity and media coverage, a significant error marred the initial days of the search, impeding the discovery of Claudia. A photograph circulated on the internet and across news agencies depicted her with blonde hair, whereas at the time of her disappearance, her hair was dark. Claudia didn't possess a modern smartphone with geolocation capabilities. She used a simple phone and had no presence on social media platforms. This lack of digital footprint made it challenging for the police to retrace her recent movements. In the scrutiny of surveillance footage around Claudia's residence, the police unearthed an unsettling discovery. On Wednesday, March 18th, an unknown man with a backpack entered the alley behind Claudia's home at 7.15 p.m. Departing just one minute later, what raised suspicions was his behavior captured by the CCTV cameras. He appeared to linger, waiting for passers-by to clear the vicinity before slipping into the alley. It was as though he sought to avoid being observed. On March 19th at 5.07 a.m., the same surveillance camera detected a man with a strikingly similar profile entering the same alley. Departing within a minute, unfortunately, the grainy CCTV footage hindered a definitive identification of whether it was the same man, and no witnesses could vouch for his presence. A comprehensive search of Claudia's residence yielded minimal evidence, save for a lone, unidentified partial fingerprint. Six weeks after Claudia's disappearance, the police transitioned the case from missing person to suspected murder. Though no evidence confirmed Claudia's demise, the absence of any signs of life cast doubt on her continued existence. The Downside At the outset of the search, Claudia's case garnered widespread media attention as the story of a diligent, an amiable young woman who had inexplicably vanished on her way to work. However, as time passed, less favorable aspects of the situation began to emerge, and public sentiment shifted. This story had resonated across the country, prompting people to seek out the intricate details surrounding the disappearance. When a woman disappears en route to her workplace, it instills fear and apprehension, as everyone is left wondering whether a similar fate could befall them. Any crime committed against an ordinary individual merely going about their daily life carries significant repercussions, as it underscores the vulnerability of anyone in such circumstances. Swiftly, the press uncovered that Claudia had maintained a rather discreet personal life and had been involved with multiple men simultaneously, some of whom were married. This revelation transformed Claudia from a beautiful and friendly young woman into a missing divorcee. Given that many of the men linked to Claudia were married, they were understandably hesitant to cooperate with the police and disclose their identities. Consequently, within a matter of months, the case had become shrouded in secrecy, rife with rumors and accusations. To this day, there are individuals who persist in withholding cooperation from the police and are unwilling to share pertinent information. Despite some attempts to advocate for her, the media had, inexplicably, cast a somewhat unfavorable light on Lawrence, employing terms like deception, secrets, and even family destroyer in eye-catching headlines. To be equitable, it's imperative to acknowledge that Claudia was an unmarried woman with no children, and her private life should never have been subject to public scrutiny. For those who were privileged to know Claudia, she was a loving and compassionate friend. The relevance of her relationships would have only been pertinent if one of these men had any involvement in her disappearance. Yet, as mentioned earlier, Claudia maintained an excessively secretive existence, 
and never divulged the identities of the men she was involved with. Consequently, the police never succeeded in establishing a comprehensive record of her connections at the time she went missing. The stark reality is that she might not have returned to her home on that Wednesday night. It is entirely plausible that Claudia met with one of these men but, for reasons known only to her, chose to keep this information hidden. Regrettably, to this day, answers remain elusive, and Claudia's disappearance persists as enigmatic now as it was 13 years ago. The Latest News in 2014, roughly five years after Claudia's disappearance, there were significant developments in the case. The police apprehended a 59-year-old man who had previously been a colleague of the missing woman and resided in close proximity to her home. A thorough search of his residence yielded no results. During the same year, another individual, Paul Harris, was arrested, and the basement of his pub, the Acom, was scrutinized. This action was taken due to the fact that Claudia's phone had been tracked in the vicinity in the weeks leading up to her disappearance. Subsequently, both men were released without any charges. In 2016, four men who frequented the Nags Head pub found themselves under arrest. They vehemently denied any involvement in Claudia's vanishing. However, in the absence of substantial evidence, they too were released. Fast forward to 2021, when fresh evidence came to light, details that the police chose not to disclose to the public. An extensive search took place near the Sand Hutton gravel pit, now inundated with water, as well as in the neighboring woods. In a concerted effort to uncover any traces, one of the reservoirs was even drained, but the quest ultimately yielded no results. The case remains veiled in mystery, replete with puzzles and conjecture. A potential breakthrough can only transpire should someone decide to come forward with new information. For her family, hope is the sole anchor left, with the yearning that someday they will finally ascertain the truth. I hope you liked this story. Please don't forget to leave a comment sharing with your thoughts below. Give a thumbs up this video. And remember to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for more captivating stories. Thank you for joining us on this remarkable journey, and we'll see you in the next video.